everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse, and I'm actually ready for bed. It's like 10.20, but I'm waiting for my husband to get home from work, and I don't want to fall asleep, so I thought I would do a little work on journaling. I haven't really done anything on it today, and I have a journal that I've been working on that you really haven't seen much because I've been doing it kind of like here and there. Um, that I'm making for a friend. She doesn't know yet, so I'm not going to say anything about her. But I have a few more things that I still want to stick in, but I think that they're going to be easier to put in after this is bound. So I thought, okay, I'm ready to bind this, and then I realized I haven't even made the cover. Usually, I make the cover pretty early on. I just feel compelled to. But I was having a hard time deciding on fabric, and I finally realized that the reason I was having a hard time deciding was because this fabric is perfect but I had just used it on a on a um, journal for myself and I don't know for some reason I thought I couldn't do that for my friend but it would actually be really cool because we say that we're sisters from another mother I know that doesn't sound as good as brother from another mother but we're sisters from another mother and so we can have twinsy journals they're not anything the same inside so I'm gonna work on the cover right now I probably won't bind it tonight I'll bind it hopefully tomorrow. I'm really anxious to get this to her. She has no clue that I'm making this for her. So what I've done is I've taken half of a file folder. That's what I often use if I'm using uh, fabric for the cover. And I just want to make sure, yeah, it's like about a quarter of an inch to half an inch on the top and the bottom that it goes over. So that's great. So I'm going to cut off the little tab here and maybe just a tad extra. Okay, and see how it's curved right here? That really doesn't matter. It's all going to be encased inside fabric, and I'm not sure if the inside of the cover is going to be fabric, or I'm kind of thinking I reprinted this in darker for the first page, and so I might actually use this for the inside cover. In which case, because it's smaller, I probably need to put this in first. Sorry, I'm thinking of this as I, I, I like to not plan everything ahead before I turn on the camera because I kind of want you guys to hear my thinking here and my strategizing and stuff. So I'm thinking if I do this, then I've got to probably um, have the fabric overlap on the inside, which is not my favorite thing simply because it's, you have to be a little bit more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always want to be accurate, but that's okay. Okay, so I think that's just the right size. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this in, and I'm going to use glue stick if I have it here. Maybe I don't. Okay, I'm, oh, here's my glue stick. Okay. I um, took a whole bunch of stuff off of my desk because I was recording, and it doesn't matter if I get glue on this because I'm going to be gluing this down. Um, I was recording some Bible teaching stuff and I didn't, you know, some of my craft stuff did show, but I didn't feel like I needed to have the huge mess that I always have. It still is a mess. There's just no avoiding that with me and I've just come to accept it. Actually fairly recently I've come to accept that I'm just a mess and that's okay. It's part of the creative personality a lot of times, not always. I don't want you to get your panties in a twist if you're creative but neat. I'm not saying that you have to be messy to be creative, but a lot of us are. And I read an article talking about how it has something to do with the creative brain and how forcing somebody who's creative to be neat actually really screws up their brain. So I thought that was interesting. I read that after watching a mom um, really reaming her very creative daughter about her messy room and I remembered how my room was always messy and anyway so I just did a little bit of research on it so that I could try to gently persuade that mom to maybe cut her kid a little slack. It, it was somebody that I could have that kind of input with. I wouldn't just go around doing that with just anybody. So don't worry guys, I stay out of other people's parenting in general. Okay, so, but this was somebody who had actually invited me to give input, so I did. Um, 
Okay, so I love this fabric. I really, really love it. It's going to be a little confusing while I'm working on this because I usually do my journaling here in my craft room. So, of course, my journal that has this fabric is in here. <laughs> um, but they are nothing alike inside, so we'll be fine. Okay, so I want to tear this. I've got to make sure I leave enough space for that to be turned in. And I have to decide whether I want to finish off the edge somehow or if I, let's just cut this a little bit more here, or if I um, want it to be able to fray a little bit. I saw a video um, it wasn't in English, but you know, you could tell from all of her actions, you could follow it really well. She was actually making a ribbon flower and she burnt the edge of the ribbon to keep it from fraying. And I thought, wow, that's brilliant. I've never used how to use, learned how to use a cigarette lighter. So I'm not sure I would be able to do it, but, and I can never light matches either. You guys, I am really seriously kind of hopeless. Okay, yeah, I think that'll be good. Okay, so let's cut off. And then, you know, this part here that I've torn, I can use as, you can use it kind of the same way as ribbon, you know, like on the edge of the paper or on the edge of a, you know, whatever. You can just use it the same way that you would use ribbon. And some people call it fabric ribbon. You can actually buy some at Etsy. There are some people who sell that because it is kind of a, if you want yards and yards of it, it is kind of a pain to sit there tearing that all day. So you have to admire the people who are willing to do that and then sell it. I mean, if you haven't checked out Etsy as far as supplies for junk journaling, you really need to because there's, you know, a lot, if there's something that you don't enjoy doing, someone has done it for you. And there's no reason that you need to do those things that you don't enjoy. There just really isn't. So it's kind of cool. Okay, so I think, I think I'm not going to try to finish the edge. I'm just going to zigzag it right over the edge, which will kind of be in itself sort of a seam finish. And this will have to be mitered, of course. Okay, so I want to Make sure that I'm doing the same amount on each side, although this side has a little bit more of that. I'm going to just cut that off just slightly so we've got the same amount on each side because I know that it sticks out quite a ways more than it really absolutely has to, but it gives her a lot of space for... I have a feeling that she's probably going to be adding a lot to the journal as far as paper and stuff, so I want to make sure that I give her plenty of room in the cover to do that. Okay, so this then needs to come over about here. Okay, so I, what I'm doing, I'm not sure if you can see. Let's make sure that I'm in the frame here. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm figuring out like how far this is. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it. Okay, I'm coming out the same amount over here. And I'm just going to clip a little bit in here so that it'll tear. Because, you know, we want that nice frayed edge. Sometimes we don't and then we cut. But if you tear, the threads are straight, hopefully. <laughs> Sometimes they're not, <laughs> but usually they're straight. And so when you tear it, it'll tear it straight, which is a whole lot better chance of getting it straight than me cutting because I am really bad at cutting straight. Okay, so we've got that. Make sure that it's going to be the right amount to, yes, exactly the right. Okay, so then this will come over here. Hi, sweetie, I'll be out in a bit. That's my husband, he just got home from work. <laughs> and <laughs> he kind of startled me because I was <laughs> just thought you and I were alone here. Um, okay, so I'm going to cut this here and tear it. there. Okay, so that gives us our fabric for the outside of the cover. 
All right, so I'm just setting my fabric aside. I'm gonna smooth this out really well. And then I'm gonna decide which part I want from the front, what I want to be up and down. Okay, so it could look like this, or it can look like this. What's the difference? That's, this is, hmm, I think I like it like this better. Okay, so we're gonna do it like this. And, Okay, so something else that I've kind of learned from experience is that it really does help if you glue this down to the fabric so that your fabric doesn't move around while you're sewing it. So I'm going to use some of my Ultimate Crafters pick and pull the little loose knot off of it first. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. I don't want to put a whole ton, but just enough to hold it all in place really nicely. I don't have to do it to the edge because I'm going to be sewing it. Okay, and this this um, dries pretty quickly, so I don't have to worry about it affecting my sewing machine adversely. But it doesn't dry so fast that you can't adjust things, and I really like that because sometimes I do have to make adjustments. <laughs> I don't always get it right when I first put it down. Okay, and see how this is coming up, the um, loose stick isn't really holding it, and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit more on here. I'm not depending on the glue stick to hold it in permanently, I'm just asking it to hold it in place while I get this all lined up to sew. And in fact, since my husband is home, I think what I'm going to do, and that'll this will give the glue more time to dry too, is I'm going to go ahead and glue this all in place. And then I can, I'm not going to miter it right now, I'll just glue up to these parts, and then I can do the mitering and the sewing in another video. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and we're going to just glue the edges. Now I'm not going to come up to the corners because I'm, I want to be able to miter these. Mitering is, is where you make it into a nice little corner here. Okay, see like this? Okay. So I'm going to just put my edges down first so that those are all in place because it is easier to miter it when you've done that. So I'm going to get that glued in place, but I am going to sew this ultimately. So let's pull this over. I'm pulling it pretty tight. I want it to be pulled tightly in place like this. Okay, so that's good, and it's pulled tightly all the way along. I'm smoothing it out because I want to make sure that it's not going to be bumpy where any of the glue is. Isn't that pretty? I love that fabric. This is Waverly fabric, and I got it at Walmart, which is kind of cool <laughs> that they had such nice fabric there. Okay, so, and I'm not sure if I mentioned that this same picture that I've got on the inside here is what's going to be the front and back pages. So it'll kind of like, you know, like this door will be on the front page so you can see this whole picture there. That'll be kind of neat, I think. Okay. All right, so I'm going to, I'm just pressing it down really hard and I'm stretching it out so that it's nice and tight and smooth. It's not quite smooth, so I've got to smooth it. There we go. Okay, and then I'm, as I'm doing that, I'm also checking to make sure that it has stayed smooth over on this side and it isn't stretched out, you know, weird or anything. Okay, so then let's just do the sides. And then, you know, even though I'm pretty sure that where I'm putting the glue isn't where I'm going to be sewing, it probably is good that I'm going to let it dry overnight. See, I'm not getting the corners caught in that. I'm letting it dry overnight so that um, I don't risk. You know, I see other journalers, other journal makers sewing right after they glue, and I haven't heard anybody say that they have any problems with their sewing machines as a result, so it's probably okay. It's probably just me being paranoid, but I am paranoid about getting glue in my machine. I'm not sure that could be kind of expensive to fix. So I do try to kind of avoid that, <laughs> kind of, 
big time. And what I'm using here to to wipe is a cosmetic wipe. Um, I found that tissues and paper towels and stuff leave too many pieces of it on the whatever I'm gluing, the surface that I'm gluing, and also on my fingers. <laughs> And I tried quite a few different things. Baby wipes work pretty good, but they do kind of fall apart too and stick, um, especially because this is such strong glue. And um, I found that the cosmetic wipes work fine. They work perfect, actually. Um, so, so I use those just to make sure. And then I use baby wipes on my desk. Okay, so everything's good. That's really nice. I want to make sure that it folds okay. Yes, it does. Very good. And the inside is folding okay. So that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is when I come back tomorrow, and I'll try to remember to turn on the camera, is I'm going to miter these corners, and I'll show you how to do that then. Okay, so I'll miter the corners, and then we will zigzag all the way around here. I'll probably do two rows of zigzag. One that catches this whole edge because it is straight, so that's good. And then one that gets the outer edge as well so that it's just on really, really securely. Um, oh, I also made the decision that I wasn't going to have a pocket right here on the inside. Um, if I was going to have that, I would have sewn or glued it onto this paper before making the cover. Now once I've bound it or made the cover even before I bind it, I could still glue something on if I wanted to, but I wouldn't be able to sew because it would come right through here. So, but I, I kind of decided to just leave it like this because I really like that picture. So, okay, I think that's it. I love you all. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.